everyone. Welcome to another webinar Wednesday with Soft Acrylic. Our focus today, DMP or CDP, WTF. We're super excited to discuss the question whether a DMP and a CDP can coexist. Uh, please feel free to participate in our question and answer. Um, Jerry and Yusuf will get there throughout our webinar today. We also have a live poll for you to answer a couple questions throughout the webinar. So with that being said, I'll pass things off to our Senior Director of Data Activation, Jerry Hulu. Thank you, Sammy. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Um, we have uh, we have a dear friends with with us, uh, Yusuf. He's uh, he's going to be joining me uh, later in the presentation or in this webinar to talk a little bit more uh, from his perspective as a client that is going through evaluating DMPs and CDPs on some of the challenges he's facing and some of the questions that he has. Um, I think the best way to, to kick this off, um, I, I wanted to just to give a little bit of an overview uh, of the, the space itself, but maybe first we can, we can just get, I, if I have to predict why you're here today, because um, as I'm, I was posting about the webinar, um, I got some feedback from people and it was really interesting, but I think there's like four types of people that could be on the webinar today. Maybe, maybe I have this right, maybe not. But one, I would say you are obsessed with acronyms, as, as everyone is in marketing and advertising, and you want to know more about what a DMP stands for and what does a CDP stand for, and maybe what is the next acronym that is coming up. Um, maybe, maybe that's not you. Maybe you are someone who always thought that DMPs were, were not as powerful as they say they are, and you're really looking for a, another reason to, to make up a use case or say, hey, Jerry said this, that means that maybe there's truth to it. Uh, or you're generally interested in knowing why, um, why there's a, a DMPs and CDPs, and shall I choose one over the other for the use cases I have? Is one stronger than the other? Uh, or you can be one of mine or Yusuf's uh, good friends that are here just to support and, and just say, I really don't care about any of this, but I'm here to support you guys. And if you're any of those people, thank you. I hope that this will be worth your time. So let's start initially uh, talking about the DMPs. So DMPs, just so that we level, level set the, what they stand for, uh, data management platforms. Uh, I think uh, anytime you, you would think about a, a DMP, there is three things that come into mind. One is that data integration or data collection. Uh, another would be segmentation, uh, idea of creating audiences based on the data that is collected. And then the third piece is data activation. And, and this is what I specialize in, uh, is data activation. And that's why DMPs play a big role. Um, another thing that comes to mind whenever you hear DMP is audience analytics. The idea of, since you're collecting so much data and you're managing this data, you're able now to come up with new audiences. Audiences that are not as simple as saying you viewed this page, you added this product, makes you this type of audience, but allows you to come up with smarter audiences. Now, in reality, uh, I'm, I actually always had a problem with the word data management platform because it sounds very much as you're managing big data. Um, and we've worked with so many DMPs and we've, they're, they're all very similar. And I think the best way to describe a DMP is actually as a data hub because you're collecting, you're segmenting, and you're activating. The, the audiences, yes, they might be accessible within that platform for a period of time, but all you're doing is you're connecting point A to point B. Um, you're not managing the, the audiences uh, beyond that, that piece. You're, you're not growing them. You're not uh, classifying them beyond just activation. Well, one thing to be, to be aware of is that DMPs are based on a cookie, right? So uh, the idea that how information is stored within a DMP um, is, not, is not a customer, is not a person, it's actually at best, it's a cookie or it is a, a mobile device ID. So uh, that's one of the things that always stand out within a, a DMP when we discuss DMPs is that there is this third party cookie. And is this third party cookie, what role does it play? Is it um, impacting uh, the, the collection or impacting the syncing between vendors or between technologies? and also mobile device IDs, what exactly they are and how they're being used. Now, 
the, the important piece to take here, and the, the question that always comes up is, with the, with the changes that are happening when it comes to cookies and device IDs, how does that impact uh, DMP? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. But what you should walk away understanding what DMP stand for is that it's anonymous data. It's anonymous data and there's no personal information. So anytime that you sit down and you talk to someone about a DMP, they would say the first thing, you cannot bring an email, you cannot bring a credit card number, you cannot bring a name, you cannot even bring an address, nothing that can tie you to a person. So all that information needs to be uh, anonymous. Anonymous in this case being whether it's a cookie or a device ID. Now, let's, let's go through some of the facts about a DMP. Uh, and there's many, um, but some of them that apply to a certain extent, and I'll explain what that means. One is you're able to onboard offline data into the DMP. Many cases when you hear about DMPs, they talk about, well, a DMP is very good at bringing behavioral data. Yes, it is, but it also brings in offline data. You're able to onboard that data. Uh, some DMPs manage identity. They do, but very limited. Um, the identity here is limited to saying there's an authenticated profile, what we might call as a pseudo uh, customer uh, versus uh, a device level information. Activating across multiple channels. Yes, DMPs are able to do that. Although DMPs initially were created to be uh, towards a media uh, and activate on, on a lot of media and buy, uh, many, uh, many use cases have changed from there to allow them to orchestrate, not orchestrate, but activate on different channels, such as uh, your own website, whether it's email and others. The problem though, and this, this is where in many cases we, we, we miss this point when we look at DMPs, is this activation is not in real time, not all the time. What that means is that uh, there, there is a delay that, that plays a role here. And that delay can be okay, for some use cases. In other use cases, it can be a deal breaker. If I am trying to trigger an email uh, using the DMP, then if this email needs to go out within seconds or minutes or hours, DMP might not be the right tool to, to, to activate on, on that channel. Bidirectional integration with a CRM and data lakes. Absolutely. Um, like we said, you're able to bring in data from, a, from an outside system, such a, a data lake, into the DMP. And at the same time, you're able to do it uh, the other way around. And finally, activating on social. I think uh, the social as in general, it's been, it's been a space that has, as a walled garden, um, it's very protective on what data you can bring in. But the DMPs uh, have, have figured out ways, whether it's bringing data through a pixel or recently through uh, hashed email IDs or customer match, whether it's to Google or Facebook or Twitter. Now, let's switch topics. Enough about DMPs. I hope everyone now is in a place where, okay, we get it. This is what a DMP is, this is what it does. All right, well, well what is the CDP? CDP, Customer Data Platform, um, another acronym for you. And as you can see, it has very similar things. So um, it allows you to look at the customer profile, the 360 degrees. I'm sure that's not the first time you've heard this. Uh, it allows you to bring different data, whether this is data coming in from uh, offline, email, uh, behavioral data. You're able to create segmentation and able to create some kind of decisioning, uh, orchestration, and then finally activating. Well, let's put these two side by side. I think when CDPs came into the market, um, I remember that very clearly because I was um, up at a conference up in Boston. Uh, it was a MarTech conference um, and it was a B2B. I think it was sponsored by Marketo at the time before Marketo joined Adobe. And there was all these companies that I've never heard of before and everyone was talking about CDP. And I went through each one of them and they all showed me the same slide. And um, the question that came to my mind, wait, this is exactly what a DMP is. Like, what, what are you doing differently? And, and the biggest difference here, I think, after looking at this and working with different CDPs, is that a CDP, yes, it has a lot in common with a DMP, but it brings something very important to the table, which is personal information. Um, 
being a person who worked very long time in the DMP world, I know that PII and DMP, th th these two don't go together. So that was always a challenge. Having the CDP now stand, coming out and saying, okay, you can have everything that DMP does, but you can also bring in some of the PII information. And on top of that, you can automate some of the, uh, the marketing and some of the techniques. Um, that's, that's in reality what a CDP comes down to. Now, there is very a lot of different types of CDPs. Uh, if you look, there are some CDPs that came from CRM, some CDPs that came from um, tag management, some CDPs that are literally just combining a DMP with an email, um, like an email marketing automation tool. Um, so each has their own value that they bring to the table. I think this is very, and this is something we're gonna to talk to Yusuf about, is how do you really properly evaluate the CDP? Um, now, if we look and we put things on the table, uh, there's a lot of powerful things that CDP bring. To, uh, bring. Uh, I think what's, what's really important here, as you look at these, these things, is to understand how these align with what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, in some cases, uh, I talk to some of my clients and they say, we really want to bring, we want to have a single source of truth. Can a CDP do that? Yes, it can. Because end of the day, a CDP evolved from a CRM. So it is a data lake that can allow you to bring the single source of truth into one location. Okay, uh, can, I, can I customize my schema so that I can have um, not only my web, you know, my web, web behavior, you know, your visitor visit hit, but also I want to know my products, my in-store, my offline. Yes, a lot of CDPs allow you to go ahead and create your custom schema. Can I manage identity? Yes, CDPs, different CDPs have different ways to approach identity. Um, some of them, identity is based on only your data. Some of them, the identity is also, is a combination of your data and your IDs with other systems, whether it's hooking into a device co-op or uh, using other tools. From here, uh, I think before we move into the discussion with Yusuf, um, I, I wanna bring this up around how CDPs and, and this marketing landscape has evolved significantly. Uh, I've been in this space for almost a decade, and I think every time I look at this MarTech um, landscape, I get, I get a, a small heart attack. Oh my God, it's getting bigger, bigger. And now, if you, if you zoom in, and obviously this screen is not very uh, clear, but you look at how many DMPs there is and how many CDPs, we are in a place where CDPs are beyond. Um, there is, uh, I feel like every company now is, is coming up and saying, we have a CDP, or we are going to build a CDP, or we're going to acquire a CDP. Um, while DMPs have slowed down or they have evolved into becoming more CDP-like. Now, it, it's, if we look at a chart, um, especially over the past few years, um, CDPs came to life in, uh, technically in 2013, uh, although they've been, some of them been around for a lot before, but never had that, that beautiful name on top. Um, but in 2016, uh, we saw the biggest change. There, there's now a CDP Institute where it documents and keeps track of what are all the proper CDPs. It even evaluates which ones actually qualify to be real time versus what they call like wannabe CDP. Uh, but it's also important to see how big companies who always bet on DMPs have, have made a shift to the CDP world. So, you know, Salesforce have, have went and purchased Datarama initially. Uh, recently, they, they went and uh, acquired Evergage a CDP out there. So they are building a CDP. They're already marketing it that they have a, a CDP. It's getting there. Um, MasterCard went and purchased Session M. So not only vendors are going and purchasing CDPs, you have companies that are data centric. MasterCard as a data provider and as, as a fi financial services company understands that 
they need to be able to automate the way and orchestrate the way they communicate with their customers, but also broadly with other vendors. So they want to have control and be, be able to customize the, DM, the CDP to match their, their need. Uh, others down in Bradstreet, Acquia, uh, Acquia and Agilon, Agile One, and the most important one, which I always found so fascinating, um, is ARM buying treasure data, or acquiring treasure data. Um, if you don't know what ARM is, me and Yusuf know because we both have electrical engineering background. ARM is one of the biggest um, um, chip uh, manufacturer in the world. Um, so they're really a hardware company. But um, they, they see that from a B2B perspective, um, the CDP is important. So they went ahead and purchased treasure data. Now, one of the two things that it's important to point out that has been, uh, that is, uh, is playing a big role in accelerating the CDPs to come to market versus uh, slowing down the DMP uh, world. One of them is uh, Google's announcement to limit or block third-party cookies uh, in the new Chrome uh, coming out in, I think, two years, so 2022. Um, and, and that is that's something already Safari does. We, we did a webinar on this. It's a really big deal. But it's significantly big deal for DMPs because there's a big dependency on how DMP shares data or actually how DMP follows the user across multiple sites. It's based on the third party cookie. So, so that, that's, uh, that's making the, the first party cookie or the first party information a lot more valuable. And this is where CDP really stands out. The other one, and this is the mobile, related to mobile, and this is something, it's funny, I predicted this, um, Last year, there was someone that posted on Twitter something saying, what could be the worst, after Google announced this, announced that they are blocking third-party cookies, uh, someone said, what, could, what, what, what worse could happen? And I was like, IDFAs and Google ad IDs, those are going to be blocked. And they were like, oh my God, that will be the, the end. And here we are. Uh, Apple just announced that with iOS 14, they're not going to remove IDFA. IDFA is the ID that is linked to your device that a lot of advertisers use. It's, it's a big component of a lot of uh, identity maps. Uh, they're not going to remove it, but actually they're going to surface that for the user. For every app that the user has on the phone, they will ask, would you want to allow tracking or not? Um, so they're taking it from being hidden in your settings, bringing it up front to you. My guess is if now people are more, uh, they understand and they know more of what's going on with data and IDs. I'm sure a lot of people are going to say not to track. I'm, I mean, I'm probably going to be one of them. So with these two happening, I think we're going to see a lot of CDPs coming, uh, becoming more, uh, more in the industry and favored over the MPs. Now, I've prepared a list of questions that, um, that I want to, in one way or another, I want to ask uh, our host today, or our guest, uh, Yusuf. Uh, Yusuf, how is it, are you able to get the camera going, or are you still having difficulties? I'm having difficulties. Either I can have the audio on, or I can have the camera on, it <laughs> looks like. Okay. So I apologize for not being able to come to the camera, everyone. No worries, no worries. Well. For people who do, know, do not know Yusuf, um, me and Yusuf go back. I, I put in two pictures here that are separated by a decade. Um, so the picture to the right, me and Yusuf, we have a lot in common. One is that we both are electrical and computer engineering background, and we both are DJs. So back in the day before the real world, me and him used to DJ a lot, whether it was in Philly or in Chicago. Uh, but recently, we both also became professional in this space. So this is another picture from Ramp Up uh, back in San Francisco last year or the year before. I can't, I really, I can't keep track. Uh, but Yusuf today um, is, uh, is a global lead at Kraft Heinz. Um, he has a background where he got into data with his previous role at Caterpillar. And uh, what he's, today he's in a place where um, and I, I think you're going to talk a little bit more to it, but at a place where you try to understand, okay, we, Kraft Heinz as a company, 
uh, that is trying to even enhance and evolve their marketing technology stack, um, where do we go? What is, what is the top priority for us to, to go down the road? Do we go with a DMP? Or we actually, we might have a DMP today, but, or we go with a CDP. Do we build our own or do we get something off the shelf? So um, Yusuf, maybe what we can start with, just give, give us like a quick overview of what you're doing today at Kraft Heinz. And let's, let's start talking about how uh, the process that you're going through in evolving that marketing stack. Definitely. Sounds good. Thank you for having me, guys. And uh, I look forward to chatting and seeing your questions later on. I think, the, I think our journey started almost two years ago when uh, we wanted to bring in our first party data set in, inside of Craft. And I think at that time, the, the question was more so was to bring in the data and, and start to do some analytics around understanding our customer and customer's behavior. Um, however, in the CPG world, we want to term that as more as a consumer because the consumers are interacting with different brands at different times um, and the customer journey is a bit fragment fragmented. So we want to understand hey, what, what is our consumer doing with our brands and how is it interacting with us? And I think at that time, nobody really asked the question of, um, you know, consolidating everything uh, from a data point of view and having a CDP. Um, for at least for Kraft and I think for most uh, CPG companies out there, um, we, we do outsource our media work to a media agency and our DMP and for us at least our DSP is with our media company today. So I think holistically we never really a thought of having a CDP at the time because our media was being managed by uh, you know, a third party. Um, where um, my organization comes in is we are charged with growing globally online uh, from, through digitally, through digital assets perhaps, or through coming up with new products, new services. Um, and the idea was is that once we do present these new services and, 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 and new brands out there under the canopy of Kraft Heinz, we want to bring in more data and we want to centralize this data. And behind all the centralization is obviously Google. Um, and we, we actually are a GCP um, uh, cloud uh, user at the moment. And that's where we're going to centralize our data. So I think that's, that's where the journey really started for us two years ago. So, so, as, so this is great because um, I already have some very similar use cases where clients are in the same position, right? Uh, you already have a DMP today. It's yep. being used for media. Um, you, you have your data centralized in a data lake. It's GCP, but it's, it's a data lake. Yep. Um, and this data is That's both correct. first party and a combination of um, site behavior and such. Um, what are, given that your state, that the DMP is with the agency, managed by the agency, um, what are the big things that you're, you're trying to decide on? Like if, you, if you're going to bring a CDP into the table, is that DMP going to stay there? now it's being managed by agency is that going to change and have it managed by by craft like how, what I, I guess that's a big point great because question. Yep. Yep. you cannot have those that's, sitting separate in that case mm -hmm. that's a great question yeah no this 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 has been um a a, a, a topic of discussion uh for for at least the past uh, few months now because we we want a real-time source of truth right and to achieve that, really, we need, that's what we need the CDP for. Um, CDP, again, with its own uniqueness of what it does for you today and what it can do for you in terms of putting together this holistic picture of your customer, I think is more suited for having that centralized place where you can use it for segmentation and personalization. I think the role of the DMP does not diminish uh, by any means. You still need something to do your ad buying and your ad tech for that. So I think this is where the media company is still going to do that for us. I think the big difference is going to be is that the measurement and the lift and how our customers are getting targeted uh, with that ads and, and, and that ad tech has to kind of feed back into the loop, which is something that is broken today with us at least because you know the media company does the, do the ad tech for us and they do the measurement for us, but it's an after a measurement, if you will, because I don't have something which is an active loop uh, right now, which is not really, really real time. Correct. So the idea is that once we do build a CDP, 
we want to bring in that uh, that piece along with it so we can actually work with the, the media team in more real time. Not that we don't do that today, but I think it's a little bit more siloed because of the brands working differently as well. That's very interesting because one thing you mentioned is that measurement. Um, and, yep. and this is um, not to, I mean, I have to be respective of all the work that agencies do. We are an agency as well. Um, it's, um, it's, in my opinion, the measurement has always been something where uh, cannot be completely owned by the agency. It, I, I think it's something that can start with agencies uh, on behalf of a brand, but ultimately need to be brought in to, to the company or the brand itself. Um, and I think uh, with the CDP, if you are, if you're looking at the CDP, whether it's part of the data lake or, or vendor that you're, you're purchasing, technology you're purchasing, right. you're centralizing that data um, and activating from there. Um, it makes the most sense for me that measurement needs to come back and be done in that CDP. So, so probably one of the things you are evaluating in your CDP search is that which of these CDPs will allow me to do the right feedback loop and see. Correct. We started here with this audience and we mm -hmm. activated, we orchestrated, and then this is what they, you know, how they looked at the ad or what they reacted. We did test and control and it came back. And what was the full experience? I think if yep. that's the case, your the idea that the DMP is sitting on, on the agency side, it becomes that the DMP is almost just like one of the channels that the CDP is activating against, right? Because yep. uh, it doesn't, the, whatever's in the DMP, these audiences should be coming in from the CDP, um, centralized, as long as there is, it makes sense. Um, or in some cases you might, like for example, the lookalike modeling, all the, these things, I yep. think they need to be centralized um, in, in the cases where it makes sense, right? We, we still need to be respectful to what's anonymous, what's PII. Um, but that's, I think the way you're thinking about it makes a lot of sense. Um, Given that you have today a data lake um, in GCP, uh, what you, where are you sitting in terms of thinking building your own CDP versus purchasing the CDP? Like where I'm that's, sure this is a, a discussion. That's a great that's question. Out. That's a great question, and I think it's it's not and it's it it does it is rooted in not only in the technicalities of choosing a CDP, but it's also rooted in your long term strategy, right? It also rooted in um budgeting of course that's a big one i think we as as a company are still evaluating what's the right um way to go whether we pick an off the shelf a cdp or a, a creating a custom cdp for the uh for the uh, for the company and um i think for us at the moment the stakeholder buy-in is obviously a big big uh, big thing in there and this, there are different stakeholders depending on the region that do want a CDP and understand why you want a CDP. I think some stakeholders are still coming on board of having an understanding of what it, the cookie less world will look like in the future, right? So I think that that buy-in is still happening. But other than that, I think the, which we're trying to come up with the exact use cases at the moment that would make sense for us to create a custom CDP. And I think that for the region such as North America, which is where the concentration of our brands and our, and our penetration with our customers is a much more large, I think a custom CDP does make more sense than having a off-the-shelf CDP um, for uh, more and more of the emerging markets where we might have you know, less penetration and maybe fewer brands. Um, it makes sense for us to maybe take an off-the-shelf CDP um, and use that. And I think the other point that we're evaluating right now is how does a CDP fit with our ad tech and our MarTech stack? Now we are GCP, which means we also are very closely aligned with the GMP stack. Um, we, we leverage a lot of the Google products today. And so whichever CDP we go with, whether it's off the shelf or a custom one, it's going to take that into consideration pretty heavily, right? Because and your measurement is most likely um, I'm assuming, and yep. I don't know if you, if you want to share this or not, but 
you guys probably considering um, the ADH, right? This is the, the environment within Google where it's going to allow you to keep your Google ID and such and be able to do, I mean, they claim they can be able to do measurement. And yep. if you go with off-the-shelf off CDP outside of that space, uh, outside of the Google, you might not be able to use it. So that's, right. I, I'm assuming that's a... You, you're yeah. obviously going to start hearing a lot about the clean room concept, right? And Google has something along those lines. We want to leverage that so we can actually use the Martech stack to do that. But the other thing is, as you see, um, if you got GCP, it is uh, a very easy uh, connectivity with the, with the GMP stack. You, you, it's not very easy to do it with the other ones that are out there, obviously. I think that's another reason why this needs to be taken into consideration. And if you don't, then you're going to have to, you know, spend a bit more and set up some more pipelines to be able to innovate those things. But I think in choosing one, this should be a very, very big consideration for you. I agree. I think related to this, but it's also important to highlight um, because that's something I'm facing with a lot of my current customers around. They, they have the DMP um, and they would have someone in their organization would go to Adobe Summit or Salesforce World mm -hmm. or to any of those or ramp up, come back here, CDP, 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 come back. And they right. say, we need a CDP. And, and then the question comes up, well, we have a DMP, do we go with CDP? And I know I touched on this, but there is, there is a problem that as, as, ven as clients and customers in general, we are very attracted to the next technology. We, because one, it sounds great, it's selling a dream, but it's also we forget what we have at hand. So in many Correct. cases, I, I see it happening over and over again, where I'll take an example, for example, Adobe DMP, right? Audience Manager, given that I worked in Adobe before and I know that product really well. Um, if I look at all my clients, I would say maybe 20% or maybe 30% are using the DMP the proper way. Um, yeah. There is limit, there's things in there that may, very few are, a, are taken advantage of. Um, not to say that whether that DMP is the best or not, but DMPs, before we put them on the shelf and move on to CDP, you mm -hmm. really want to assess, am I using this the best? Uh, is it doing everything I want? And then evaluate the problems that you're facing with it. For example, if, you're, if your issues are uh, that you're not able to do orchestration or you're not able to do proper segmentation or the integrations are just not seamless, yes, these are good points to say the DMP is not cutting it. Uh, but if the case is that the DMP is just sitting there and you don't have people to manage it, and you don't have a DMP manager, you don't have a team that is evaluating, creating segments and activating and, and just studying and understanding how well it's performing, then guess what? You're going to have the same exact problem when you go to a CDP. And even I could not agree more than harder. that. I completely agree with that. Yep. Yep. The CDP, I mean, one of the most important things is that you really want to get the data standardized very well. And today, uh, in any organization, most likely that data is sitting either with IT or data engineering. Um, and they think of it as data they don't think of it as data to be marketed or to be used mm -hmm. for marketing um, and i think if, if you're trying to solve the problem of saying i want to be a data-driven company and i want to be able to reach my customer with the right message at the right time with the right content although i hate that cliche but everyone says it um, before you jump on getting a, a cdp really think is my organization ready to do to go and buy a cdp so well, something that, else that can be a cliche, sorry, Jerry, to yeah. cut you off, is data strategy, right? Everybody asks you, hey, do you have a data strategy or not? Um, and in our case... How do you build a data strategy, though, in this case? Well, you know, the, the question that... This question has been asked to us a few times, and I'll tell you what, right? As a company, um, we broadly are collecting both online and offline data. I have a lot of offline data, both for transactional, financial marketing data that I can use. But for something CDP related, which is more, I would say, real time again, and you are using as a source of truth has to be something which is rooted within the first party data set, which is obviously primary 
the key to CDP, but then again, it also has to be coming from the online world. You, your data strategy needs to be rooted in those two areas, I would say, first of all, and that's really where our data lake that we've put together is more consumer facing online um, you know, data that we wanna use in order to be able to do our one-on-one -on -one marketing, our personalization, our segmentation, and so on and so forth, right? And the use cases obviously can exceed by any limits. But I think to, the, to your earlier point about, you know, shelving the DMP right away, I, I could not agree more. I think that the, there, there's definitely a lot of value that can still be brought out of a DMP, um, especially if it's used to its fullest capability. And I think you're right that uh, the DMP themselves have evolved, right? They're not the same what they were two years ago. So are you fully leveraging it or not? And I think one of the first very few use cases we talked about was when we started to say when we started talking about six months ago, hey, we want to do more work on PI enrichment. We have PI data, but we want to enrich it more. What do we do with that? So when that discussion ensued, we said, are we are looking at the right segments or not? And I think this is the first time I actually went into the DMP and started looking at the segments over there. And then the question came up, hey, are we targeting the right segments or not? And we realized we can actually tweak our segments furthermore if we wanted to by doing some quantitative analysis for the DMP, right? right? And then furthermore, we can actually go back and do some ID resolution if you wanted to by using or leveraging live rank. Mm -hmm. So you, yes, you can still leverage DMP to a certain extent depending on your use cases, but your use cases expand to a point where you start or you need to start evaluating a DMP, yes, then I, I think you should start looking at a CDP. So yeah. it, 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 it's, it is a very, uh, I wanna say a thin line, but at the same time, you, you want to evaluate what are you trying to get to uh, within your business and for your brands in CPG especially that leverage both the DMP and the CDP according to their own strengths. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Um, let's shift. Um, I know we're approaching the end of the webinar, so I, I want to make sure we go. There's two questions that were asked. One is, do you foresee DMP vendors pivoting to CDPs? It seems that they can just add capabilities and create the best of both worlds. Yes, I, I think um, that's happening today. So, for example, um, I would say Adobe, uh, before the CDP was like a thing, um, Adobe looked at, they, I think they had the strongest DMP offering, um, but they took that DMP and they said, we also have a marketing automation tool, which is Adobe Campaign, and they created an integration. Now, that you can say with, big quotes, that could be a CDP, right? Because it's, it's covering PII, anonymous, and also channels are email, push notification, and also everything else that Ani's manager does. The problem was that the integration between these two was not ideal. The, the time lag, the, the matching, it was just, it didn't work, right? You, you couldn't centralize. I mean, I sold that idea. I, I was one of the people presented at Adobe Summit on the integration between these two. So I, I really believed in it. But it was not, it couldn't perform as well as customers wanted. So I think Adobe, what Adobe did was, was really smart. And they said, all right, this is great, but we want to do this right. So they went and created Adobe Experience Platform, which on top, that sits, uh, the idea, it is a data lake. End of the day, it's a data lake that hosts Adobe data, bring your own data. And then they added these tools. One of them is real-time CDP, which is, it's a CDP. It's not, I don't think it's exactly real-time, but it's getting there. But you pivot, you look at Salesforce. Salesforce said, well, I'm not going to build one. Uh, although they also had the same situation. They had um, the Crux or Audience Studio that was, has a connection with Exact Target or Salesforce Marketing Cloud. But that integration is also not ideal. The match rates are not good. So, so instead, they went and bought Datarama and Evergage and both of these, they're going to come up with a CDP. So I definitely see uh, these big companies are evolving to that. But also don't forget about the existing CDPs out there that are, that have been doing this for a while, whether, you know, like Telium uh, Livestream or you got um, MParticle uh, or Treasure Data. So there, there's actually many. I mean, there's so many to choose from. Let's take another question. Uh, is your understanding that changes in Chrome will allow anonymized info to be shared or will be tracking blocked? I think, um, I think tracking is going to evolve. 
um, but it's not going to evolve to a place where it's going to be the same way that it was before. Um, and I think it's a good thing. I think it's, it's time for us to put a lid over the way that we tra track people um, on their browser. I think it, it's wild, wild west now. And programmatic, I know it's going to take a hit on programmatic advertising, but that, that is time to evolve. With that, that being said, there is a lot of companies that are coming up and strengthening their own uh, ID, right? So for example, you look at LiveRamp, which is taking the Abilitech ID or the IDL, and that IDL, the identity link, that is something unique that is tied to a person, and that ID becomes now the tracker. It, it's, it's deterministic, it's not probabilistic, and I'm sure LiveRAM is not the only one. A lot of the programmatic uh, vendors, whether it's uh, Trade Desk or Media Math, they're doing similar things where they're saying, let's come together and come up with an ID that is respectful and it doesn't or abuse the information collects and also un, uh, protects the privacy of our users. So that's, I think we're gonna pivot to more like that. Another question, what is the uplift you would expect in your marketing performance by adding a CDP to the mix? I, um, this, is, this is a big question. Um, yeah. I, it depends on where you are today. What are you doing today? Are you, are you doing any marketing today in terms of automation? Do you, do you have strong first party data? I don't think we will be able to tackle that question without understanding the current state. Do you agree with that, Yusuf? I agree with that. There's a lot of dimensions to that question, honestly. Where you are today, what you're benchmarking as, uh, again, the strength of your first party data set, um, what's, the, what's the breadth of your first party data set, and I, again, uh, you, know, you know, what your, your current tech stack looks like. All of those things matter uh, to really quantify that. If you do go to different CDP websites, they will give you different benchmarks, they'll give you different numbers, they'll give you percentages actually, not yeah. actual numbers. Um, yeah, but that's why evaluation, right? Like yep, you really yep. wanna evaluate, take your, I mean, you're doing this now, take your time in evaluating the next technology. Don't, don't jump on the next tool. Even in some cases, if they give you, hey, this is free for the first year or discounted, before you take that jump. Because oh, right? yeah. that's gonna happen is you might commit to it and then it sits on the bench for a year, Second year comes in, you might be in a different role, and it stays on the bench for another year not being used. It happens all the time. So Yeah, I will tell you that yeah. just technical, technical jargon and technical questions are not going to answer the, the right CDP for you. Um, as a matter of fact, you can go to uh, cdpinstitute.org, and you can download a big questionnaire of what you should be asking mm -hmm. to, when you're looking at a CDP. Uh, but I, the, way, the best way to evaluate uh, the right CDP for yourself is to come up with three or four uh, scenarios that you want the CDP to run. Um, and most of these companies will do that for you. Um, and you can see the performance, you can see the lift, and it could be done in a, in a, in a matter of a month or, or 60 days or whatever for your evaluation. Um, and you see how it's performing with your data, with your tech stack, um, and you know how is it integrated into, into your other second and third party vendors and you go from there. Um, that's, that's how I would look at it. Absolutely. And I think you gotta keep in mind that CDPs are not magic. Um, they're, they have limitations. And you need to assess what are these limitations that map to your needs. So in some cases, some CDPs are excellent at orchestration. And orchestration might be the biggest pain point that you have. So that yeah. might tackle it. Others have crazy amount of integrations. Others have the best identity management. Really figure out, the same way like when you're buying a house, right? I remember when I was looking to buy a house, we made a list of like must have, nice to have, I definitely don't want to have, right? right. So these are the things, as simple as that, let's start building that, that list of saying, I need it to be, have A, B, and C, and these are okay. And these, definitely, I don't want it. Like, I don't want to see these problems. If Matrix is a problem or it's going to take me a year to build it or it's super technical, the UI is horrible, I don't want it from the beginning. List that out. That's a good point. Um, two more questions and we can wrap this up. Um, what can you say about CDP and cloud data outside of your country? If I understand this question, I'm assuming that this is related to uh, privacy. Um, on where the data lives. I think it's an excellent question. I would ask that question directly to your CDP vendor uh, that you were talking to because the idea here is um, 
many of these CDPs are, are definitely starting in the US. And, and this is a wave that happens, even with DMPs. You still see DMPs popping in Europe. Um, I recently talked to a vendor uh, about one, which I was like, you guys are still doing DMPs? I mean, that boat, I feel like, have left long time ago, but it's still. So the majority of the technology might be starting here in the US, meaning although they have databases or data uh, uh, centers around the world, but most of the data will be hosted in a certain location. Talk to your vendor and if privacy is, a, is important to you, um, then that will be one of your criteria. And maybe that could be the case why you want your own CDP because you want to own that data. That's a big deal. Like data, owning that data could have never been more important than it is now. I mean, if you're watching any news about the mishandling of data, especially with, with the crisis we're in, it's more important now to have control over that. Um, final question, are there the same cookie matching problems when trying to activate a CDP audience that were always brought up with a DMP? I think Google talking down using AMP. 100%, that, that problem is not disappearing. Any problem that you faced with media activation is based on ID matching, okay? It's CDP, in different CDPs have different problems, but a CDP is still gonna face that problem. So uh, the match between whether Adobe uh, or Salesforce sending to a Google or Facebook, um, that will continue, but you really need to and we've, we've had this problem before, but you need to look at how each system measure matching uh, or measure the, the life of a cookie or the life of a profile. Uh, for a simple example, Adobe Honest Manager looks at 120 days. If you've been in their pool somewhere, as long as that cookie appeared somewhere in the past 120 days, you're still active. Uh, Google, in many cases, they only look at 30 days. Even if you were active uh, outside of that 30 days, you're, you're not anymore showing up and reporting. So you can never compare these apples to apples. That would never happen, whether it's a DMP, CDP, or you're going from a DSP directly. So that problem, I would say, will continue to happen. Just be a little bit more educated on how to properly measure it so that you're comparing things that are knowing what are the limitations. All right, Yusuf, any last words? No, this has been great. Uh, I think... Uh... The journey for CDP, as, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's uh, it's definitely not uh, a straight one. You you guys definitely have a lot to consider and look at as you as you uh, you know decide to pick one for your for your organization. And I think that uh, uh, as things move forward, uh, evaluating all the all the right points is very important, especially from from your data and the, and your stakeholders. Again, I I, I would urge that. You have to ask your business what what direction they want to go in uh, when picking one. Um, but yeah, certainly this has been uh, great. I would say if you guys on the audience, if you have any other questions that you want to reach out, please do. Um, I am on LinkedIn and uh, you know happy to connect if, uh, if if there's any questions or any concerns from your side that you would like to uh, share. And equally so, I, I mean, I would like to learn if there's anything else that I can do for my organization uh, from outside. That would that'd be great too. Absolutely. I think uh, next time we'll make sure we get your face on camera. Yeah. So we'll fix that. <laughs> and uh, maybe, maybe we'll do a little music set before. And I feel like okay. we're going to do this again. I think, uh, I think this was a good discussion. Definitely. There was very good questions. I want to thank you for taking time. I know you're, oh, you guys are super busy. Uh, and thank everyone who attended. Um, this will be, this is recorded. Um, we will have it up on our YouTube channel. And then you have my information. Uh, Jerry, hello, you can find me also on LinkedIn. Any questions? I love DMPs. I love this space. And I would love to talk about it all day. As you can see, I can't stop talking. <laughs> so, no, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys on the next webinar.